Is this possibly the best Astro accessory money can buy? Well, I think yes. Well, hi and welcome to the channel. So look, I've got an observatory and my worst nightmare is I've got Nina running the rig for me. I go to bed and during the night when the roof is open, we get a rain cloud come over and there's nothing I can do about it. The rig is going to get wet and there's a lot of money's worth of equipment going to get ruined. So obviously I don't want that to happen. So what would the solution be? Well, to complete my full automation of my observatory, I'm going to need a weather station. So um, here we have Lanatico Cloud Watcher and Weather Station. Now, um, full disclosure, Lanatico have kindly sent this to me for review. And if I choose to purchase this, then uh, they will sell it to me at a discounted price. So with that out of the way, let me uh, show you what's in the box. Here we have the actual main box. This is the Cloud Watcher. And as you can see, built in to the front here, there is a light sensor. And this area here is a rain sensor. Oh, and on the bottom, there is a atmospheric pressure and relative humidity sensor. Now, this is an add-on, but it came with the kit. So um, it's already attached. Now, there are other add-ons you can have for this. And this is an anemometer and it is a wind sensor. Now, this will fit on the bracket like this. And the Lanatico Cloud Watcher will sit like that. And you have these uh, cable outlets pointing downwards. You can see it's got a slope on it. So uh, the, the rain will obviously run off. You don't want any water getting into here, even though they are uh, waterproof cables. So um, this is what it's going to look like. And also in the box, is uh, the cable. Now this is the seven meter cable. This this comes in different lengths and uh, I'm gonna go into this in more detail later. But what I wanna do now is get this all connected, put it all together, uh, get it on the pole, fit it onto the observatory, and then we're gonna download some software and hopefully get it all working with Nina. So we've just gotta get behind this observatory and battle this bush to uh, mark up where the bracket is gonna go. Well, this is just an ordinary TV aerial pole and uh, I bought it online for about 15 pounds. And the bracket fits nicely on the pole using the supplied U-bolts. So I just had to mark out where I can drill. There are cables the other side of the wall. I need to make sure that I don't drill into them. Right, so I'm now going to drill a hole to poke the cable through the observatory wall. But what I'm going to do is just test the uh, hole with um, this drill bit on this piece of RSB first before I actually drill it into the observatory. Make sure it's going to fit. Right, so let's just check that fits. That goes in there nicely. Firstly, I'm going to mark up where to drill. Or more importantly, where not to drill. My light is 800 away from the corner, and that's only 700. So I can drill anywhere here. All right, I'm actually going to put a pilot hole in first. There's a hole inside, I'm going to put the cable through and uh, then I can take it up to the player watcher and get it connected. They're yeah, all the way through now. Right, I'll go outside and pull that through, make sure the cable don't get twisted. Right, just going to get it connected outside. <coughs> So I've tied the cable to the pole using these little uh, cable ties here, just to make it nice and neat. And I've got the anemometer connected to the clay watcher as well. 
So when all the equipment is installed and the cables connected, you're going to need to go onto the Natigo Astro's website and download some software. So let's go onto that now and uh, I'll show you where to get that. Right, so if we click on this top one here, lunatigoastro.com, and you'll see, I think they've changed their website around because this now looks a little easier. So if you come down to here, click on Cloud Watcher, and you'll come straight into the Cloud Watcher, and the software is basically right here. You used to have to scroll right down to the bottom, but if you click on Software and Downloads, this box here, it'll take you to where you can get your software from. So um, here's the software here. You want the Cloud Watcher Data Display installer there. And you've got the um, Windows software there. And a little bit further down is the ASCOM driver installer there. So it's those three you're going to want. Um, this is obviously if you're using a Windows computer. Right, so there's other downloads here if you want for Linux, um, OS X and Android, uh, a firmware upgrade if you need that, but uh, this is where the software is. So I just downloaded these three pieces here, uh, the installer for the CloudWatcher data display, Windows software installer, and the ASCOM driver installer. So let's have a quick look at the website and here you will see the CloudWatcher, Cloud Detector, Price in euros, 389 to 505. This is the uh, Cloud Watcher unit. It's got a light sensor built in, uh, the actual rain sensor, and the Cloud Watcher. That's all in this little unit here. And let's just look at the accessories. So you will need the uh, Lenatico Astro's cable. This is a special cable which you will need. This comes in different lengths. I bought the 7 meter cable, I think it goes up to 10. It actually says there, look, there's three, five, seven, or 10. So um, the only thing with this cable is, it is a serial cable, but apparently according to Lunatico Astro, the reason they use a serial cable is because the serial cable is a far better, more stable connection than a USB cable, especially over long distances. So you will need a serial to USB adapter. Now Lunatico do sell those as well, but um, I bought mine, I think I got it from Amazon. You'll also need their bracket because it's designed to slope the cloud watcher down on an angle so the water runs off. So here's the bracket you'll need. You're gonna need a 15 volt DC one amp power supply, which is currently out of stock. Um, and, um, and you may want the a nanometer. Now that is an add-on, you don't have to have it. Uh, I've also got, it doesn't show it on here. Um, I've got the atmospheric pressure and uh, humidity sensor. Well, I've got it anyway. It fits onto the bottom of the unit. So, um, again, it's an add-on. You don't have to have it. But as long as you've got the power supply, the cable, the bracket, and obviously the cloud watcher, that's all you're actually going to need. Um, oh, you will need the adapter to go from serial to USB. Um, so with those items, that's enough to get the uh, Clay Watcher up and running. Right, so they also do the Clay Watcher Solo, which I don't have. This is, I think, designed to work um, in, in conjunction with the actual Clay Watcher. And they also do another little Clay Watcher, which is designed for all your portable gear. And that just connects to your phone or a tablet, and it will send you a signal if there's a cloud, so you can race outside to the rig and you could cover it up or take it in whatever um, i don't have that but i mean the concept it's a great idea um, it's something you may consider uh, if you don't have an observatory but you want to protect your gear you would just leave it running outside next to the rig and if the clouds come over it will notify you you might be indoors you're not going to be aware that it's turn cloudy so that's a great piece of equipment it could be very useful um, I don't have that but um, it is something to consider anyway right so let's come out of this and let's go and have a look at the cloud watcher once you've got all that software downloaded then when you start up the cloud watcher this is the page that you'll come to where you can set it all up 
Right, so this is what you will see when you first power it up. And you need to set it up. So you've got along the top here, this is the sensor. This is where it will show you all of the uh, conditions. So along the top here, you've got all these little tabs here. The first one is this first screen, the sensor. And the next one is the graphs. So if you like graphs, there's lots of graphs here. You've got clouds, rain, uh, wind, brightness, temperature all kinds of graphs here. This is where the limits are. This is where you can set the Cloud Watcher up. You'll need to play around with these settings, um, get them just right for your own sky conditions. It's going to be a little bit of trial and error. It's going to take a little bit of time, but it's worth playing around with them and getting it just right. So unsafe, this is where you set your um, the unsafe conditions. As you can see, I've got cloudy and overcast ticked, uh, wet and rain. I'm actually going to run tick wet. So um, I've just now got it on rain. Uh, I've got it on very windy and low pressure. So then we go over to setup. Now I've left all this pretty much alone. Although you, you do need to check your COM port. Right at the top, this is connected to COM port 6. Uh, the best way to do that is to go into Device Manager, click on COM ports, and uh, it will show you the list of um, your COM ports. If you're still not sure, pull the plug, see which COM port disappears, then plug it back in, and whichever COM port comes back on screen, that's what the COM port is for your Cloud Watcher. And then just come into here, make sure it's the same. Mine is COM port 6, so that's fine. Um, and then I did change this right down the bottom scroll to the bottom and I changed the darkness reference for my sky 21.43 and I changed the um, safe condition delay I just changed that to 120 seconds so I'm playing around with that for the moment I may change that to three or four minutes I'm not sure yet but uh, currently it's on 120 seconds um, so um, in setup you've got the uh, tabs on the side so if you come down to where it says network click on that this is where you will set up um, a file for all your data to be saved so um, I've set up a file on my desktop called weather data and you will need to um, when you connect to Nina you will need to point Nina to this particular file so that all the data can come across into Nina so this is where you'll set that up and um, if we go back to the sensor, I'm going to click on start and start recording. So that data is now is basically overwriting the file. So um, it just continually overwrites that file. So right, we have um, a clear sky. It's dry and calm. It's saying brightness level is saying is light, but it's not actually light. So I do need to play around with my settings to get that um, darkness reference just right. Um, although the reason it's probably saying light is because we've got a full moon tonight. That will actually play a part in the um, conditions. So you, you need to play around with that just, just to get it right. So um, under safe conditions at a moment, it's actually saying safe. So um, if I go into where it says unsafe, and I change that to, um, let's just change that to light because it's registering as light at the moment. So it's now changed to unsafe because it's set up as an unsafe condition being light. Well, obviously if it's too light, you can't image anyway. So if I uncheck that light, it should now go back to safe. Okay, it's gone back to safe now. Right, so this is, um, where you will set your unsafe conditions. You could select any of these and it will register unsafe if any of these conditions are met. So it will take a little while to get it set up properly. So it's worth playing around with the settings and getting it just right for your conditions. But I found it very easy to set up, very easy to use. It's quite intuitive. Um, and yeah, I think it's a fantastic bit of kit. Right, so here in Nina, where I've got the wait for time, which is um, starting at nautical dusk, underneath that I've got uh, wait to safe instruction. 
So um, that won't actually start until the weather station reports that it's safe to open the roof. And then further down here in the sequence, under the triggers, I've got here when it says becomes unsafe. So in this box here, there's some instructions where it will stop the guiding, uh, stop the tracking, close the roof and part of the scope. And then once safe, it will then open the shutter, unpark the scope, set the track and slew and send that and start guiding again and it'll continue with the imaging session until it um, comes to nautical dawn when it will shut the um, imaging session down altogether. So the um, weather station is keeping an eye on things and if it becomes unsafe during the imaging session it will shut the roof and uh, it will pause everything and then continue when it's safe to do so. So um, having that ability is a fantastic addition to um, any sequence. So that just gives you complete peace of mind and you don't have to worry about if it becomes cloudy and potential rain. So um, I think just that is fantastic. So I found out how to put this uh, when it becomes unsafe and once safe into the sequence by watching Astro Bloke's video and also a Logan's Astro video. They both feature how to do this and you have to download the um, um, power ups and all those instructions are in here. So if you download the power ups you'll get the once safe and when it becomes unsafe instructions that you can add into your sequence. So if you've got an observatory then I think this is an essential piece of kit and it's going to be well worth the money. So far so good. This has been working very well and um, I can highly recommend it. I think Lunatic Astro have done a brilliant job and uh, this is uh, going to remain a permanent fixture in my observatory. So go along to their website and on there there's some other reviews. There's the Astro Shed channel, Astro Bloke channel, uh, Logan's Astro and Star Stuff. So um, go and have a look at all those. They're, they've all got something to offer and you'll find out a little bit more about it. So yeah, big thanks to Lanetico for sending me the Cloud Watcher and thanks to you for watching and I hope you found it useful. Hope you liked the video. If you're not subscribed yet and you like this kind of thing, please hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up. It really does help the channel get pushed out to other people and uh, that would be much appreciated. I've got more reviews to come on other equipment, so um, stay tuned for that. That will be coming shortly. So I want to say a big thanks to all my existing subscribers. Thanks for watching and of course I wish you all clear skies. This is, and I'm going to get it right. This is an anemometer, a nemo, and you want these. <laughs>